focus. Just for a minute, I need you to really focus hard, like your life depends on it. I'm going to give you a proof of a statement, and I need you to tell me with 100% confidence whether or not it's a valid proof. Okay, well that's pretty easy first year undergrad stuff. How about this one from final year undergrad? Maybe that's still easy for you, but how about this one? If your life really did depend on it, you try to find an expert to check for you. But what about if there's no collection of experts in the world that you trusted to validate or invalidate it with 100% accuracy? You see, most of undergrad math was stuff done in the 1800s, but the proofs in modern math often have incredible creativity to the point where the people that came up with them don't even know themselves if it actually provides a valid proof. And yeah, saying your life depends on it is a bit silly, but in math, when you think about how interconnected modern research is, a small Small error in one paper could have a massive impact through this connected network to the point where trying to backtrack to find out just which results have the validity still yet to prove based off this error is an outrageous task. And when the rigor of math starts to get undermined, that's very dangerous territory for the subject. But this is territory that has already been trodden on. You see, the annals of math it's one of the hardest journals to get into. It contains Wiles' proof of Fermat's last theorem. It often takes three years to get into. Three years of rigorous peer review. Well, there are two papers in there that have contradictory statements in their abstracts. And I've talked before about how I think the human brain is a bit pants. It's both strange and interesting how the human brain is capable of generating really creative ideas that it itself can also not verify reliably. So there has to be a change in maths and we need a holistic solution because proofs are only going to get more novel, more creative and more specialised, meaning less expertise in that area available for rigorous peer review. And if you don't believe me, the solution has had an estimated 500 million thrown at it in the last few years. And that solution is formalization. So here is Lean. This is one of the proof assistants and it's powered by a small core of code called its kernel that knows the rules of logic and types. And the reason why having this small is important is because it means that a human can read it and check it. This means there's a library, a big library of definitions and results of things in math. And that's called Matlib. And you can see that here and it's not so clear what's going on here. And I'll get back to that. <laughs> but the point is, is that you can import this and then you call a theorem and everything has been written by a human. And so you can use these results by calling its name. And then under the hood is all the stuff that the kernel needs to check it. But maybe you can already see part of the problem. It is a nightmare in that these results are without words telling you what they are. And there's a lot of nuances and subtleties, meaning it's so easy to get in a mess trying to work with these things. That's if you can even find it. And this is where a lot of that money is going. And that is auto formalization, which is, can we get LLMs to formalize stuff for us? Because right now they're rubbish. They hallucinate names of things all the time, type mismatches all over the place, but it feels very necessary to have LLMs formalized and stuff if you want it to be part of the future of math. Because the barrier to entry is quite high, as in a mathematician has to invest a huge amount of time to get to a point where they can start formalizing their own results. And I suspect convincing the masses to invest that time is a very difficult challenge. And these are the challenges that made it really hard to integrate formal verification into our tutor on MathHub and is why you just don't see it anywhere else. So how do you go about learning this stuff? Well, there are games you can play to get you familiar with the type system and tactics. And there are also online books you can read like this one. But I think at the moment, it's quite hard to stick with it for long enough, unless you have a very good reason to, like if you're working on a formalization project, because like I said, there's so many nuances, it, it is a pain. And there are tools like Lean Search, which aim to bridge the natural language description gap. So here you can see Abel's summation formula. I mean, <laughs> good luck finding that. <laughs> but even then you need its import pass type signature, how it fits into your code. So this is why we realized that we can use the systems we built for building Lean into our tutor to make a really useful tool. So if you're a mathematician using this stuff, trying to learn it, then this tool is completely free. You can put in your code or just chat to it like a chat bot, but this only interacts with the database. It doesn't hallucinate nonsense. So here I've asked about showing a path connected space is connected. You can see all the relevant constructs, their type signatures, import paths, and get guidance about tactics, why your proof is wrong, how to use these stakes. And it's completely free and is another step towards lowering this barrier, this time investment you have to put in. But if you are a beginner, then we've got a free course. So that is the solution. And even if you don't want to touch this stuff, I still think really exciting. It's exciting that things like Schultz's proof has been done and that maybe soon we'll have a system that can do a 
big sweep of all of research math that has been done up to this point and so everything has thumbs up thumbs down next to it so i want to know if you've learned it how have you gotten on with it and also if there are any problems you've encountered or proofs where you've read the solution and you can see what it's trying to do you can get why it sort of gets you in the right direction but you can't convince yourself that it actually does provide a watertight full proof. Uh, there's maybe only two problems I've encountered like this in my undergrad and I've just moved on putting it down to my own inadequacy but it's exciting to think that maybe soon I'll get a thumbs up thumbs down on my own inadequacy. <laughs>